Hey everyone, I'm Flo, dude is behind the camera. How many of you out there are just tired of eating dried turkey? And it makes sense that it's dried because you're cooking this massive turkey in the oven in a dry heat that is coming from the outside into the very center of your turkey. And as it cooks, it's cooking the outside more until it hits the middle. A few years ago, I started to sous vide my turkey breasts and oh my goodness, total game changer. My mom, if you ask her, she'll say, I don't like turkey. I just don't like it. But she will have a piece just to be polite. But when I started sous videing the turkey, she would eat two to three servings. The reason why I love to sous vide meat, especially really expensive cuts of meat, is because of the precision cooking. It cooks the meat to the exact temperature that it should be served at, and the exact temperature and texture that you want it to be. And so I went on a search for turkey breasts, and I don't know if it's just the season here because we don't have Thanksgiving coming up, uh, Christmas is still a ways off and we already had our Canadian Thanksgiving in October. It was really hard to find turkey breasts, but I ended up at the butcher and he specially cut these up just for me, which was so nice. And they're huge. Did you see how big they were? Each turkey breast is like a small chicken. Yeah, seriously. So I want to be able to enjoy this turkey. I want it to be moist, slightly pink, but tender and juicy. And so if you want to see how I've done turkey in the Instant Pot, I've done dark meat in the Instant Pot. And in that same video was also the very first time I tried using sous vide to cook the turkey. And even though I did not have a sous vide specific device at the time, it still did a pretty good job. But now that I've learned more about the precision of the temperature of the water and how a sous vide specific device works, I much prefer using my Juul over uh, the technique I use there with the Instant Pot. I'm just doing a very simple seasoning for the turkey breast today. And I am using one teaspoon of dry thyme, half a teaspoon of dried sage, or ground sage, I'm not sure what it's called. Two teaspoons of kosher salt. and some freshly ground pepper. And I'm just mixing all of these seasoning in a little bowl because I find it's easier to distribute everything evenly instead of trying to do it each individually. I'm gonna remove the skin first because what I'm gonna do is crisp that up in the oven instead of sous videing it. So we're just gonna, it's fairly easy to remove the skin. You don't even have to cut it. It comes wow. right off. It does come off quite easy. Yeah. And it's not as uh, gentle as chicken skin. No, just like giant piece of skin right here. You know, one time I bought a turkey and it didn't have the breast skin on there. I was just like, whoa, what happened? So of course I just layered it with butter on, or not butter. Well, yeah, maybe butter. Butter and bacon on top. But what happened was I didn't buy, I bought a utility turkey. So apparently a utility turkey is, um, is, it could be missing a leg or, well, in my case it was missing skin, but it was cheaper. That's why I bought it, because it was cheaper and I thought, oh, well, I don't know what a utility tur turkey is. How different can it be? Okay, I'm gonna season it on the underside. They are huge. These are like, like you said, each one is like a whole chicken. Are they locally grown? Yeah, so they're organic and locally grown. 
So to make it into a loaf, we're going to put a fat end with a skinny end. And the same, right, on the other side. And then I'm going to tie it together with string. It's a little bit difficult because it's slippery, but I'm sure you will be fine. It's not hard. And I'm not doing anything fancy, I'm just tying it into a knot. And I do find if you double, um, you go under twice and then pull the string, it will keep it taut without um, it becoming loose on you. And then just one more knot. You can just cut off the excess string. That's it. So pro, right? So, so pro fesh. <laughs> We're going to season the rest of the loaf on all sides. Just kind of rub it in as you go. I can't get over how massive this, this is. Of meat is. And you know what? In the sous vide, it's only going to take two and a half hours too. It's not like a huge amount of time. There are some other recipes out there. Like with my jewel, they actually recommend a minimum of eight hours to 24 hours for uh, sous vide -ing. And I think it changes the texture of it, makes it more tender the longer you cook it for. But I've also read in other um, blogs that you can just cook it for two and a half hours at a certain temperature and it would be fine. I wanted to use my large silicon bags to cook this in, but it just won't fit. So I am using one of my food saver bags and we will seal it up. If you don't have a food saver or a sealer, you don't have to use one. When you push the food into the water, the pressure of the water will... Um, push out the air. Yeah, push out the air in your bag. But since I have the food saver, I will just use that. And it's sealed. We're setting the jewel to 138 degrees Fahrenheit. And once that turns green, that means the water is heated. I'd already kind of preheated the water earlier, but it's cooled down since. There is almost four pounds of breast meat here. That's why it's like a small chicken. What I love about using the sous vide is that it First of all, it elevates my cooking and it's not complicated. Anyone could do this and it's so simple to use. But one of the things I love most about it is that I can leave it in the water for much longer than the two and a half hour cook time and know that it's not going to be overcooked. You're not gonna burn it, definitely not burn it, but it's not even gonna dry out, which to me is amazing. See, just like that. Tells me to add my food. So just make sure that the whole thing is submerged. Make sure that all the meat is submerged. And then I'm just gonna press start and that starts my two and a half hour timer that I've set. That's it. Super, super easy. So while I'm cooking my turkey, I have made some cranberry sauce, I have made some stuffing, and I'm now crisping up the skin. And I'm also going to make some gravy and some mashed potatoes tonight. So full on turkey dinner is what we're going for. And I'll all be done in the two and a half hours that the turkey is cooking. I'm going to season the skin with just some salt and pepper. And if you wanted to add some herbs or other spices to this too, you are more than welcome to do so. I've laid a sheet pan with some parchment paper. I'm just gonna put one piece down. And make sure that it's flat and that there's no air bubbles. And same with this piece. Then I'm gonna lay down another piece of parchment and squeeze out all the air if you can. 
so that it won't shrink too much or, or curl up. And we're gonna put another pan right on top to add his weight. And we're gonna put that in the oven, 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 to 45 minutes. Oh my goodness, dude. And that was only half an hour at 400 degrees. Looks good. <laughs> Ready to eat. I know, amazing. All right, turning it off. And because I am actually ready on time with everything else, I can turn it off, know that it's fully done. And you know what? And if I was running behind in my cooking, it, I could have just left it in the water for however much longer until I was ready to eat. Well, I can see the steam rising off that. I know, and you know what? Because it was cooked sous vide, it's ready to eat. There is no resting time needed. As soon as you pull it out of the bag, that's exactly when you're supposed to cut into it and consume it. So here we go. I want you to see how juicy it is. Look at that. Oh, that looks incredible. Look at how tender that is. Well, you know, it's time for... Taste. <laughs> Thanks to all those who enjoyed the taste intro last time. I'll try to bring the fire more often. When we showed you the turkey skin earlier, I didn't tap at it, but I'm gonna do it right now. The crackling, it was almost like, like pork crackling. You guys hear that? Oh my lanta. Let's get down to business. Woo! Mmm. You know, in all my years of eating turkey, every time the turkey is carved and laid out, people go for the dark meat and then the uh, turkey breast meat is just sitting there forlorn and lonely and dry. Okay, so I'm gonna get one more slice in here. The turkey is super flavorful and really moist. I just can't compare it to what turkey usually is like. Man, look at that skin. That's crazy. Combo time. Mmm, you will never get turkey skin like that. That is bomb, fire. So the turkey overall, it's cooked in my opinion, perfectly moist, tender, not mealy. And when you grab a bite with the turkey skin, it is amazing. You got the softness and you got the crispiness. It's like, oh, good. Thanks, dude. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Dude's opinion, and you all know that that matters. Well, you know, I really hope that you guys can see what a difference the sous vide device makes, not just for cooking the turkey breast to like this succulent piece of meat, but it also frees your oven to do your stuffing, to crisp up the skin. I made the mashed potatoes in the Instant Pot, and you can get that recipe up in the corner there. Um, I just nuked some corn and I made some cranberry sauce. If you like this video, please give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel below. Till next time, be simple, ordinary, and joyful.